In this video, I'm going to share a debugging technique for cumulative layer shift that I find really useful. And we're going to look at two examples on how to apply that. First, let's look at this AWS.training website. We have a layer shift score of 0.38. And if I expand this, I can see what's happening. So before we have the spinner and the footer is visible at the bottom. And then this actual JavaScript widget is loading and it pushes the footer out of the viewport. And that's causing the layout shift. So the best way to fix this kind of issue is to make the spinner container a bit bigger so that the footer doesn't appear in the first place and then doesn't get pushed out of the viewport. However, the challenge often is identifying the spinner and identifying the CSS style that you have to apply to it. And this is where it's really helpful to go into Chrome DevTools, slowly load the page, and then pause the page at the point where the spinner is visible. So let me open DevTools. I click Inspect. Um, and what I can do just conceptually is I go into sources and there's this pause execution button. So if at any point during the loading process, I click on this, you can see that the page actually pauses um, just when the spinner is visible. Um, I was actually really lucky just now because normally it takes a few tries to actually pause at just the right moment. And let me just show you what you can do in that case. And I just switched to an incognito window because otherwise I'm already paused on that like thread on AWS training. So I can't pause again, or I can't load the page because I'm always going to be paused. So it will be really tricky most of the time to pause at the right point. So what you can do is first of all, you're going to throttle the network. Um, I'm setting to eight uh, megabits, 100 milliseconds round trip time on the network. You can also uh, select some of these. These are the default ones. I've configured my custom ones. Uh, you can click add to configure uh, your own custom settings. But if I click like on slow 4G, that is one part of the throttling that I can do to try and maximize my chances of clicking at the right time. Uh, but I can also add a CPU slowdown and that should also just generally give me a bit more time to click when the spinner is appearing. So let me go back to sources and I'm going to reload command R and then hopefully I can, you know, just see just when it's loading. And you can see right now I actually click too early and that happens a lot of the time. And the page is still all white. So I have to click again. And now if I pause now, obviously I'm too late. So what's going to happen a lot of the time here is you're just going to keep reloading and then eventually you're going to get lucky and you kind of, you wait for the thing to appear. And it's not always going to happen. So you know, I never got a spinner just now. Um, but yeah, sometimes it just takes a couple tries. So luckily for this video, I was lucky just now. And we actually pause at the exact right moment. And now I can look at the spinner and see, well, what styles do I have to change on the page um, to make the spinner take up a bit more space? So this is a spinner container. And right now, obviously, it's not large enough. So I'm going to add like a min height. Um, I'm not sure how long, how big I want it to be. So maybe 800 pixels. And now I won't have the issue with the layout shift anymore. Let me just find the CSS selector because right now I'm just adding it directly to the element. I think the element is generated via JavaScript, so I can't just edit the HTML here. Finding the selector here is actually a little bit tricky because you can see the CSS class name is actually dynamically generated, so it might change in the future. So instead, what I'm going to do is construct a custom selector here. I've got the header, and I know the div follows immediately after the header. And I'm just going to apply the min height uh, to this. And then I can just add this as a CSS rule, and it will just work, just like adding the style directly on the element. And then as a last step, let me select this, and I can go into the debug bear experiments. Uh, I can add this to the HTML of the page. Uh, click Run Experiment, and it's going to just tell me, like, did this actually fix the issue that I wanted to fix? That takes a few minutes to run, so I've already done this earlier. Uh, if I go back to this result, you can see um, all the layout shift has been resolved. And maybe visually, we can also see a comparison here where we just have a much bigger placeholder for the spinner, so the footer doesn't appear and therefore doesn't get pushed out of the viewport. So that's our first example. Uh, let's move on to a second one. Again, we have a bunch of layer shift. And in this case, it actually looks fairly subtle. Um, I might zoom in just to make it a bit more clearer what's going on here. Um, so we're rendering this banner with the button here, this Learn More button. And you can see on the left, before the shift, it is below the text above it. And then after the shift, the banner text and the button appear, appear on the same line. And as a result, you know, the banner gets smaller 
and a lot of the content shift upwards and it's causing this poor layout shift score. And again, just like in the previous example, I now have to figure out what changed on the page so I can make the CSS changes that fix the layout shift. So let me try loading this page and I'm going to inspect again. And I think that also means my throttling is enabled. So I'm at uh, slow 4G. Hopefully I can reload. Everything is kind of normal and I can replicate the issue that I'm trying to debug here. Okay, it's still loading. Uh, maybe for slow 4G is a bit too slow, make it a bit faster. Um, okay, yeah. So because it loaded so slowly early on, that probably means like if I want to replicate what it looked like before, uh, before the layout shift, that actually is really easy because it stays in that space for a long time. I just click, well, not just quite enough. Let me reload again. And just before the layout shift ha happens, now this is frustrating. So it seems like the content disappears for some reason. Okay, this time it worked. Uh, it is a bit tricky pausing at the right place, um, as you could just see. And yeah, let me inspect this uh, content and then I could compare how it looks like in this state, what is what the page content is like in this state compared to the final state. And the easiest way to do that is for me to open another window. And let me just make, make this one a bit smaller uh, so I can see both the windows side by side. I'm gonna make this one smaller as well and I'm also going to inspect this banner again. So the first thing I'm probably going to look at is the banner is somehow uh, smaller. I'm looking at the hero here. So this is the banner. It's a section article wrapper. Okay, let's look at a wrapper. Is a wrapper different? a different size? In the final rendered version, the wrapper is 1140 pixels wide. I can compare this to what it is like in the partially rendered version, and it is also the same size. So the size of the wrapper or the banner content doesn't change. Um, next, I'm going to look at the section title. So a section title uh, currently um, in the partially rendered version, it is 960 pixels wide, and I compare that to this uh, fully rendered version, and you can see it is 900 pixels wide. Uh, so that already tells me why this layout shift happens because this section title, this heading changes size and becomes smaller. And then now the button has enough space to kind of live on that same line as the text here. So why does this text content change in size? A really common reason for this is web fonts that are loaded gradually. So if I look at the computed styles here, I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can look at rendered fonts. And it tells me that the font in the final version is Proxima Nova Semi Bold. Now I can compare that to the partially rendered version uh, when loading the page is still in progress. And you can see it's actually loading Helvetica. And apparently Helvetica takes up a little bit more space. And we can just double check that's actually what's going on. So if I change this in the styles and force the font family to be Helvetica, you can see that's actually how I replicate this issue again, where the button appears on the next line. Um, so now we know that this is a problem. So how do we fix this? Um, there's a few different approaches. The most proper approach probably is to customize the fallback font that we're using here. So you can kind of reduce the letter spacing, for example, and then it's just going to render at a much more similar size uh, to the final font. However, that's a bit tricky. Um, you just need to spend some time messing around with CSS styles. And if you want to do that and supporting you to you, you can do that. Um, but if you just want a quick fix, usually you can just adjust some spacing or the font size. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do here. So let me go to the styles. I can add a new style for this heading. And I'm just going to set the font size to something smaller. So currently it's 2 REM. I'm going to set it to like 1.8 IAM. Um, this is not going to work maybe because I might need to add important uh, to this. Um, got caps lock enabled, uh, but it doesn't matter. Either way it works with or without caps lock. Uh, and you can see that resolves the issue. Uh, and again, I can try this in the debug bear experiments. So I add another style tag here. I paste what I just wrote in DevTools to try it out. Uh, 
give it a title, but I've already done this earlier and you can see what the impact of this is. Again, I'm fixing all the layout shift score. And while before I had this shift, um, we now always have enough space for the button to appear. And I think that's probably still like a small change, a very small shift. Um, when the font is loading, the texture gets smaller and you can see this very small shift of the button to the left. Um, but it's not a big deal because it's a very small shift and it doesn't impact all the content further down on the page. Whereas before, you know, when this layout shift happened up here, all the content below it uh, was shifting. So yeah, this is um, the technique I use to debug a lot of CLS issues. Um, you know, slow down the network in Chrome DevTools and then pause at the right point to investigate what you need to do and what CSS change can fix the problem for you.